thank you so much uh, for inviting me to speak today, uh, Dr. Marins. It's an honor to be on a panel with you. Um, you're doing some wonderful work. And um, today I'm going to talk about essentially, oh, oh and thank you to the Alliance and Lucy. I didn't want to let that go. <laughs> Um, so today I'm going to talk about the way in which uh, the statute of limitations reform movement has moved the ball so that we learn more about child sex abuse, we help more victims, and maybe most importantly, we inform the public about the dangers to children that they never would have imagined before. Uh, next slide. So what is an SOL? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, of course, it has another meaning as well, but we're trying to make it not that meaning. It's a statute of limitations. And the statutes are just deadlines. That's all they are. Uh, so there are deadlines for contract disputes. There's no deadline for murder and then everything in between. Um, and we're always dealing with both criminal statutes of limitations, which is when uh, the victim can go sue, uh, press charges against a perpetrator, and they may be put in jail or fined. The civil statute of limitations, by contrast, doesn't have the power to put anyone in jail, but it does create the opportunity to have those who caused the abuse to pay for the harm that followed. Uh, and we know from... Um, uh, Department of Justice, that the average a amount of harm done to a victim is about 830,000, 830,000 over the course of their lives. And that's an average, some less, some significantly more. Uh, we study SOLs at Child USA. Uh, we're a nonprofit think tank. We put social science and law together. The Sean P. McElmail Statute of Limitations Research Institute was founded because Sean passed away of a drug overdose when he was the only person who could possibly press charges against his perpetrator and a priest who'd been abusing children for 30 years. Um, next slide, please. So we have this issue of delayed disclosure, um, which Dr. Marins has uh, really beautifully explained the science behind the reality, which is that we know that many adults have never told anyone, or they may have told a friend, or they may have told someone who is never going to bring them to the legal system. And the average is 52 years old um, to come forward. About a third of kids never come, uh, a third of kids come forward when they're children, but not necessarily to the authorities. Uh, about a third come forward during um, their lifetimes. And then there's a good third that never come forward at all. Um, and as you saw from Dr. Merritt, there are lots of different slices of facts about this. But the bottom line for lawmakers is they need to understand that child sexual abuse is not like breaking your leg. When you break your leg, you call out to your parents, they take you to the emergency room, you get a cast, and all your friends sign it, there's no question you've been harmed. With respect to child sex abuse, a child uh, does not have the context to understand, especially when it's done by someone they trust, someone they love. Uh, and uh, children simply don't understand that sex may actually feel good physically, but be horrific for their health and their future, and frankly, um, the adults in their lives. So um, for children, they don't get it. And they may not get it until they're an adult because you usually don't understand that you lost your childhood until you are an adult. Um, a kid going through their childhood doesn't have that opportunity. So next slide, please. So they delay uh, disclosing for all the reasons Dr. Marin said, um, and uh, it's the effect of the trauma. And, um, and for many, uh, these children are in situations where they, they just can't communicate it because they don't understand it or because the adults around them all trust the perpetrator. 
and can't hear what the child is saying. Uh, next slide, please. So we mark at Child USA, we mark um, the beginning of the upward tick in access to justice for child sex abuse victims with 2002 and the movie Spotlight. Why? Um, it, not the movie, but the reality behind the movie. 20 years ago, this month, the Boston Globe put out the story that showed not that an individual perpetrator had uh, sexually abused a child as had been revealed in Louisiana with um, a priest named Gote uh, in the 80s. No, this was the first time the public could comprehend that an institution was responsible for enabling predators, child predators, and at the same time, covering it up. And so what we saw as an institution in um, the Boston Archdiocese that was perfectly capable of knowing about seriatim abuse by um, uh, a priest, uh, very charismatic, Shanley involved with NAMBLA, uh, the North American Man Boy Love Association, and then a, a much older uh, priest, uh, John Gagan, who had uh, so many victims over the course of his career as a priest. And so the systemic quality, the fact that this is something that is not just a perpetrator, it's a whole system putting children at risk. This is what we saw. Uh, and then the next paradigm example, we have the Catholic church. And then in uh, 2011, a little over 10 years ago, we have Penn State. So we have two major examples out there of institutions that people love and rely on for different reasons, of course, but that permitted children to be um, sexually abused child after child. Next uh, slide, please. So uh, the truth is, is that statute of limitations reform is for child sex abuse victims, but it is needed by the public. And so the three primary ways that we benefit as a culture and not just individual victims from SOL reform is that it does identify hidden child predators and the institutions that endanger children. When you open up a legal avenue for a victim, now we find out that children were being sexually abused in California, in New York, uh, in Illinois. And all of a sudden, you know that that Boston Archdiocese was not by itself responsible. It was a whole institution across the country. Um, and then you also learn, once you hear about Larry Nasser and uh, USA Gymnastics, you then start to have survivors coming forward who are saying, wait a minute, my doctor at my university sexually abused me too. USC, UCLA, Ohio State University, um, and University of Michigan, all examples of doctors uh, who have uh, destroyed people's lives and been covered up by institutions and right now in the United States, because this is a state by state issue, you were able to get justice in New York. You were able to get justice and reveal your identity in California and many other states. But Ohio and Michigan have kept it quiet. And so for those child predators, those child abuse victims, they are in trouble because the way our system works is that we prefer and protect adults. It's an instinct in the system that we have to learn to overcome. But since we prefer and protect adults, if a child abuse victim comes forward and there is no statute of limitations reform, they cannot be in the protection of the judiciary. You either are uh, risking uh, defamation lawsuits against you, or you are risking business practices lawsuits against you. So right now in the United States, there are defamation lawsuits by perpetrators against their own victims 
uh, trying to shut them up because they're in states where the statute of limitations doesn't give the victim a cause of action. We have just recently seen a filing in Chicago against uh, really the longest known uh, USA Volleyball uh, perpetrator, and he's suing his victim in order to be able to argue that she's ruining his business. So you need the statute of limitations reform, not just for what is desperately needed, which is um, damages and compensation for the harm and the lifelong uh, possibility of needing therapy, but you also need it for when a child sex abuse victim comes forward, they're safe, they're in the legal system. Um, and it's going to be a lot harder uh, to be able to sue for defamation and for business practice interference than it is if they can go to court, the victims go to court, they get the discovery and they get the truth out to the world about how the cover up occurred and how they ena enabled this particular perpetrator. So that's one, that, that, that's a big public benefit um, both ways because we get the truth. Um, but it also educates the public about the prevalent signs and impact of child sex abuse so they can be prevented. The public to this day tends to repeatedly underestimate the amount of child sex abuse that occurs across the board, whether it's families, gyms, or churches. Um, but there is this um, desire to fix the problem. Uh, so say University of Michigan had this doctor who was sexually abusing um, the kids coming in to University of Michigan and some young adults, and there was no statute of limitations open. Michigan had the shortest statute of limitations in the United States um, for quite a while. And, and if you think about it, it was age 19 when the average age of coming forward is in the early 50s, uh, and, and the end result of that has been that the least amount of knowledge about sex abuse rampant in the state of Michigan, whether it's the universities or it's the gyms or it's the schools and families, nobody knew, understands it. Um, it is, uh, this is a matter of educating, not just survivors who know the experience all too well, You've got to educate families. How do parents know what the signs are? How do they know the stories? How do they know that children aren't listened to unless you get the facts out to the public? Um, and how do you know how to prevent it into the future? Uh, and how do you persuade judges this is real? This delayed disclosure is not just a decision to just slow down, um, not report, and then you reach a certain age and then you go after the money because that is the normal defense that's raised. Um, and frankly, these large institutions want nothing more than for all of this to disappear so that um, these institutions that are beloved can just fill back in right where the explosion occurred and the truth was coming out. So we need to know who child predators are right now and they may be doing it now and they may have been doing it 30 years ago Age is not a deterrent to child predators. It educates the public. And finally, um, and this is just the basis of the fairness of the United States justice system. It shifts the cost of the abuse from the victims and the taxpayers to the ones who caused it. Um, right now, victims in most states are having to share uh, the cost, bear the cost of their own abuse and um, taxpayers in many circumstances end up paying because victims suffer, they don't achieve their um, potentials, they may not be capable of a full um, and um, rewarding career or education. And so the victims need to rely on Medicaid or they need to rely on state resources and local resources in order to be able to just survive. So with these three elements, statute of limitations reform needs to be at the top of every state who wants to defeat child sex abuse. Um, next slide, please. So we rank um, the child sex abuse statutes of limitations by jurisdiction, 
go to childusa.org, go to our law page. There's more information than you probably ever want. Um, but we track the criminal and civil federal and state statutes of limitations in the United States weekly. So we update it every Thursday uh, and you will find out. The current stats are that uh, we're making a lot more progress on criminal statute of limitation elimination um, in 49 states in some variety. Um, we've got 17 states that have just thrown out their civil statutes of limitations. And we have 27 states um, that have revived or provided a window for the victims from the past, for those who had expired civil claims. Next slide, please. So uh, you go to our site and you can see how we rank um, and we talk about the different types of uh, revivals of expired child sex abuse civil claims. And, and let me just on the side, you know, just like a professor, I'll give you a footnote. The footnote is that the, um, you can't revive a criminal statute of limitations. Once it expires, that's it for the criminal side. So for the vast majority of victims in the United States, uh, most of them cannot bring a criminal claim. And so if they can't char press charges, that means the only thing they could do because their, uh, all their statute of limitations have expired is to have their civil claims revived. So for most of our victims from the past, that's our only option, but it's, it, it's a pretty powerful one. The movement is toward, we started in California in 2003, and we had a one year during which we had what we call a window. All, all claims of child sexual abuse were revived. And um, we had about 1,150 victims come forward. Uh, we learned about many institutions, including of course the Catholic church, but Explorer Scouts, other religious organizations, families, et cetera. Um, and so that was the beginning of trying to claw back an opportunity for the victims to be able to get some justice and get the truth to the public. Um, that has evolved so that Hawaii actually has had a window open three times for a total of six years. And Vermont uh, and now Maine, the Marianas Islands and also Guam have just basically erased um, their civil statute of limitations backwards and forwards, which is, um, that's the future. That's where we're headed. Um, and the logic is irrefutable that child sex abuse victims need the time and the public needs to know uh, what's going on. And so we fully expect the intermediate windows that have been open for two years or three years or four years, we expect in the future to see these SOLs eliminated backwards and forwards. Um, and that's the only way we're gonna solve um, this problem uh, at the foundation and then be able to work up with all the other things that we need to do. I just want to let everybody know, we have established a library on child sex abuse. It is for survivors, teachers, family members, it's resources. And Dr. Marins, you and I need to chat about what resources you think we need to add, um, <laughs> but it is a safe, place for a survivor to go if they're trying to figure out what the heck happened to me. Um, and so if you go to, I'm embarrassed to say it's called the Hamilton Library, that's my <laughs> staff's fault, uh, but it's uh, the Hamilton Library uh, on childusa.org. And um, it's, where, it's where everybody needs to go if they want to understand what the heck happens, how can I prevent it, but also how can I deal with it if it's already happened.